Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In the first part of my Morse Trainer series, I used a breadboard approach with the Arduino Mega and a large LCD display. I used this breadboard to build and test the hardware as well as to write the necessary software. Based on the learnings of the breadboard, I want now to build a working prototype. I want that this prototype is fully usable for a user. This means it has to be in a case and the switches, displays and power supply has to be close to a really useful product. Breadboards have a big advantage. They provide multiple connections for one pin and you can put elements directly on the board. I will need a different system for the prototype. Several possibilities exist. On the fly, where I connect the parts with DuPont wires, prototype PCBs, which are available in the internet, custom manufactured PCBs. In this episode, I will concentrate on the first possibility. The other two possibilities will be covered in later videos. On the fly is well suited for circuitry with only a few parts. This is often the case when you use a small Arduino like the Pro Mini with a sensor, a switch and a display. Prototype PCBs are good for circuits with many connections where you do not want to make an effort to create a custom PCB. Custom PCBs are very neat but the effort to produce one is quite high. And if you discover an error or optimization potential, you have to start over again. Often you lose your parts because you cannot desolder them easily. In this video, I will show you how I build my Morse Trainer prototype using the on the fly method. First, we need to build our parts and wiring to be used in the prototype. Because I will use DuPont wires, I have to add these wires to all parts. Here we see several parts, for example potentiometers, LEDs and so on. If one pin on the Arduino needs several connections, I use pin headers to build small connectors where some or all pins are soldered together. If you have more than one I2C device, for example, you can even build a small I2C bus as shown on the bottom of this display. Because the Arduino Pro Mini only has very limited VCC and ground pins, I have to build small connectors to connect it with a battery or to the bench power supply. But let's show you how I do this. I use a very simple principle based on standard products like DuPont wires and standard pin headers in one or two rows, <coughs> together with some shrink tube and hot glue. The DuPont wires I buy in batches. Depending on the need, I use 30 or 40 centimeter wires. Usually, I keep them together and if possible, I also choose black or blue for ground. I slice as many wires as I need for the particular case and cut them in half. This is faster, cheaper and better quality than doing my own wires with a crimper. If you want to crimp your own wires, I include a good video in the comments. Next. I cut the headers to the desired length. I use normal 40 pin headers in two rows for the ground and for VCC. After that I unisolate the wires long enough to cover all pins of one row. The header pins and the wires are tinned for later soldering. For soldering I use a small vise. Check if all pins are soldered.
To protect the delicate soldering area, I use transparent heat shrink tubes. So I always see which is the plus and which is the grand pin. For further protection, I fill the tube with hot glue. As preparation, I shrink the tube at the bottom that the glue cannot leak. I only fill about a third of the tube because with the latest shrinking, it will fill automatically. At the end, as a trick, I cool the glue with compressed air. Just hold the can upside down. Ready is the power supply for my project. Next, I build a two colored LED based on the same principle. Here I use thin hot shrink tubes to isolate the wires. Glue is not necessary here because the tube shrinks enough. Also here you can use color coding for easier and safer later work. Now it is time to build the case. For drawing I use SOLIDWORKS and for 3D print preparation I use Simplify 3D. Both are very good tools but they are not free. There are other tools around which are also very usable for these small jobs. For 3D printing I use my one hull duplicator 4X described in another episode. It is a very good printer. I normally use PLA because I'm used to it. With ABS I, hide, I had my problems. To keep small things in place I often use double-sided adhesive tape. If it has to hold on PLA, I put a few drops of superglue on the tape before pressing it in place. In the meanwhile, I discovered that the case was too small and I had to print another one which is taller. I also bought empty shells of 2 to 10 pins DuPont headers. If I have to connect for example a display with 6 parallel wires, I take the single shells off the wires and put them into the empty shell. A very convenient way to get order into your project. Now I have everything to put the whole project together and into the box. Finally the prototype can be tested. It works fine. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Bye!